Welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. Join Janet and her friends as they gather at the intersection of consciousness and self-experience. What being consciousness in human form is all about. Access heart-centered awareness with them and feel the difference in the moment that will last a lifetime. Hello and welcome to Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet. I'm Janet Barrett. Thank you for joining me now. In this moment, we are connecting through my voice to a here, a location without form. My voice moves and ripples out on the quantum realm of heart-centered awareness, the field of unified consciousness. It hits your ear and you feel it within at the same time. We are in a shared connection. We are sharing life at its core. In being here with me, your breathing is deepening to a sense of your heartbeat. Just notice. It moves through your heart, bringing your awareness of your beingness into your being. Your essence embraces itself as the body and flow is present. Time and space become malleable and expansive, loosening their dictates and form. Here they become their truth as senses. What is it like when time and space are experienced as senses? Just notice what you become aware of. Today's episode is all about the reality of scalar energy. So many of us can feel physically compromised in being in a form. We can equate our humanity with pain and suffering, or diminished results. Well, what would it be like to be able to boost and stabilize your energetic human footprint and inner sense of prana, chi, mana, radiant energy, and feeling the delights of being in a form to be in joy and harmony with your body and your surroundings? Joining me is Tom Palladino of Scalar Light, who will explain the basics of scalar energy and how it is the basis of all life in our quantum realm of consciousness. Scalar energy is quantum energy. It is part of consciousness. It is in everything and everywhere and in between as the spectrum of all. It is the medium of life. Different traditions have many names for it. Prana, radiant energy, chi, zero point field, om, mana. It is the fundamental life force of the cosmos as it is sunlight and starlight. And reality is malleable. We shape it with our thoughts and feelings and we share in it. Before I ever talked with Tom Palladino for this conversation, I sensed him as a man of spirit, passion, focus, and science. And much of what he feels passionate and focuses on is the science and nature of scalar energy. In his undergraduate studies, he studied various scientists. It was the work of Nikola Tesla and his foundational work in electrical and scalar energy that would capture his interest. Tom was to realize the incredible healing available to each of us if we were to harness our awareness of scalar as the foundation of life. He recognized that with a bit of attention, each of us could utilize it to enrich our health and lives. Along the way, he expanded into creating instruments that capture this subtle dimensional energy. He developed a technique using scalar energy he calls scalar light to transmute pathogens of all kinds from our bodies, something many of us will find helpful in this age of viral concerns. He will share with you that God provided him the guidance and wisdom to achieve this understanding at his website www.scalarlight.com. You will find many different ways he utilizes specific instruments for particular healing directives. His scalar light chakra balance serves to bring both your brain waves as well as your energetic seven chakra centers in harmony, which influences your state of consciousness. 
He presents to forums and seminars all over the world. You can find him on several media platforms. He is busy spreading awareness of what the National Institute of Science is recognizing as an emerging field of study of the complex hemodynamic regulation of living systems and the place of scalar energy in it. Tom's work with scalar light fits into the realm that they have coined bioenergetic therapies. He is a man with a simple mission of global wellness using remote energy healing for the world. We will start with him sharing with all of us the reality that is scalar energy. Welcome, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Thanks for the invitation, Janet. Oh, I'm happy to do it. I've, been, I've, you, you, you corner the market on something that is totally fascinating to me, and I think what life is all about, and that's scalar energy. So we're going to share that with people, and everyone, as you're listening, you're we're going to feel the field go really deep because this is Tom's. He's a scalar energy researcher. And he's been doing this for many years, and this is what lights his fire. It'll be easy for you to sh- he'll share that with us. So we want to be noticing, as we be present here now, that this is active transformational reality, and Tom is all for it. So just notice. So does that sound like right up your alley, Tom? Uh, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll see where we go. This will be fun. So everyone, just breathe. Just notice your breathing. You don't have to set it up or do any special kind. Just bring awareness to your breath. Oh, there we go. And then your heart. Notice your heartbeat. There you go. Now bring the breath through the heart. And that's where we're bringing being, the essence of being, into form and awareness. It's already within us. We're just organizing our systems to, to be present. So as you feel that, let's just notice the calm, the sacred... There's chaos all around us, and that's just fine. We're looking for inner truth. So self is busy dealing with things. We're just going to put self over there a little bit, all the story over there a little bit, and just breathe. And let yourself enjoy being present with Tom and I. How are you doing, Tom? I am relaxed, and I'm ready to go. Thank you. Okay, so that's the way you notice being in this state is relaxed, and that's that's just absolutely perfect, everyone. So however you're noticing it, go with it, and let's just see. And so let's tell me about scalar, Tom. I think scalar energy is in all certainly the, the consciousness technology awareness that I hold and don't hold <laughs> – because I'm not a scientist, but I use the principles. Um, it, let, let's start with that, and then then we'll wind up. Because you do such a marvelous job with looking to provide healing for those who feel scalar in a physical sense, it, in helping health and in wellness. But it's also what its foundation to, and that's really just kind of the tip of one of those icebergs there. So tell us about scalar energy and what we're doing. Well, as you put it adroitly, it is consciousness technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, let Let me define my terms. I'm not working with electricity. This is not electromagnetic energy. Scalar mm-hmm. energy is quantum energy, or what we call consciousness. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the backdrop of the universe. It's star energy. It's sun energy. And that's what makes it so exciting. This, this is not something that, sh- that you get from a power. Our plant. This mm-hmm. is the very essence of the universe. It's star energy, which permeates obviously the universe. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that is that that in and of itself should set this apart from any other technology out there. This is the life force technology of the universe. Got it. Now, is this is any chance what they refer to as dark energy in any way? It, sometimes it's it's that term comes. You to, know, you fine. know, for depending upon what scientific background you're you're in. Right. Okay. Okay. So we're attacking in the quantum field. 
zero point field or where where there we go everyone notice that just access that and you can feel that massive ripple going out Ooh, how fun, Tom. I knew this would be fun. Yes. <laughs> All yes, right. Yes. So let's see. All right. So it's it's what conscious holds consciousness together, I suppose. Yes. Um, and I see that as an active transformational um, reality that we're creating all the time because I'm into morphic resonance and things like that. So, how so there is no time or space, or time and space is different in this medium, or it, does that relate at all? It, it, you're right. Scalar light or this consciousness transcends time or space. That is, everything is in the present moment, there is no mm -hmm. past, there is no future. And you're everywhere. It, so that really speaks to the holographic sense of this universe. The, the part is the whole. The whole is the part. Everything is interconnected. And that's what we have with, with scalar energy, with this consciousness technology. We're accessing a dimension, a dimension in which it's, it has an infinite possibility. There is no time or space. We transcend time or space. Got it. So now I'm familiar with scalar in terms of antimatter and matter, for instance, and you collapse the two together and you get something totally different. Now, how does that fit into this? Yeah, let's just keep this on a non-physical level. That is scalar okay. energy. Scalar energy, very good, is light. It's it's not a neutron Got or it. a proton. So we're just going to specifically speak about this non-physical reality, consciousness. It's the light of the stars. It's it's the okay. the essence of the stars. Okay. Got it. So how you can take? All right. Well, let's see. Well, what do we do with it? How do uh, we embody it? How do we embody it? If it's everywhere, right? And it has no form, but we have form. So what's happening? Uh, I say this, and I mean this with all sincerity. Everybody is a scalar light expert. People mm -hmm. don't realize that. What is mm -hmm. scalar light? It's, it's responsible for our heartbeat. It's responsible for our brain waves. So the fact that, w that we think and the fact that we have a beating heart all of those point to this intelligence this consciousness that really serves to undergird everything in the universe including our, our emotions including our thoughts and including our our creativity so that's what we're really tapping into we're tapping into the intelligence of the universe it's it's quite fascinating so this was um so the whole topic of scalar is something new to the 20th century kind of thing, or was like Tesla, Nikola Tesla, the first one who's been was working with this and talking about this in his work. It was this what was going on there in the 20s and 30s. Exactly, Nikola Tesla was the first man that I know of who was able to harness scalar energy or this consciousness technology. Okay. Um, he graduated from AC electricity, and he eventually made his way into this other realm, this other dimension, scalar energy. And I frankly think that that was his finest moment. Although he's known as the father of AC electricity, his most brilliant inventions, his really the, the meridian of his career was with scalar energy, this consciousness technology. Now, did he refer to it as consciousness, or is that something we're putting it to it? Tesla referred to it as radiant energy, and uh, I, okay. I love one of his quotes. He felt that r this radiant energy or consciousness, as he called it, was the wheel work of the, of the universe, the very wheel work of everything. And I think he's right. It's the wheel work of the universe. Okay. Well, let's take a moment here. Let me check in and see how we're how we're tracking this and. <sighs> Here we go, everybody. I, can, you, I think you can just really expect uh, in this conversation with Tom that deepening, deepening awareness is not even a state. This is a sense because it has no form to it and, and it's just awareness. So, in being present, there we go. 
giving yourself permission to maybe feel a little deeper or something different, which is what we're always after. And let's, I'm going to suggest, because we're going to go places with Tom here, just allow something that's, everybody notice whatever is to the right of you. There's something in front over there. Doesn't have to have a clear, just notice that there's something over there. And what we're going to do over the next few minutes is we'll see what happens with that as we explore Scalar with Tom. So what you got for us, Tom? What more do you know? We want to know as foundation about Scalar. Sure. sure. Uh, again, I, I want to make this very palatable. Everybody mm-hmm. is a Scalar energy researcher. Everybody is a Scalar energy expert. Now, what do I mean mm-hmm. by that? Well, anytime you think it's a broadcast, it's an emanation of a scalar wave. So scalar energy is everywhere. It's our thought pattern. It's our creativity. It's responsible for keeping our molecules in a orderly fashion. It's it's the very fundament of our emotions. It's it's the very cause of time. Scalar energy is responsible for gravity. So when you look at what scalar energy does everything. It's responsible for all uh, spiritual, mental, and and physical activity in the universe. Understand what what we're really speaking about. We're speaking about that intelligence of the universe, what some people call the logos of the universe, Mm -hmm. and how how this is now within our reach. Mm. Yeah. Just notice, everyone. You are this. We're talking about what's at core of us. Now, some some traditions are going to call it divineness and, you know, uh, infinite being and, and lots of different words. But we're all talking about being present. The beingness is in form here. But the beingness is out of form. And I, th- I think that's probably what scalar is, right? Is yes. the beingness out of form and we're bringing it into form. So we have access. That's what we're talking about all the time in doing being with this podcast is that in creating that as your reality, acknowledging it and working with it that we are actively creating reality whether we're aware of it or not Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and all the things that we are so clumsy about and how we've created and crafted this world to this point and where we are right now with stopping and taking a look and a, a new awareness in being so all right let's see what else we got there what else do you want them to know and then we'll get into all your special stuff you got well, uh, let me ex- expand upon that. We are creating okay. reality. And okay. I think, once again, you fit the nail on the head. Scalar energy, this consciousness, allows us to create our reality. As I mentioned previously, this is cognition. The, these are brain waves. This is our creativity. Mm-hmm. And it shows how every person has control, mastery over their mind, over their emotions. And hence, with that, We are going to create the world around us. We will create our reality. The way we think eventually becomes the reality that that we've wanted, that we've that we've so desired. So what you think is ultimately what you will create in your world. Got it. And what we're what we do here is we use that awareness to transform what we're creating. So that yes. you're, you're understanding that we are creating is where we get involved in it and going, yes, and let's bring awareness into what we're creating, right? Yes. So, okay, so everybody just notice what happened to that thing over there in the right. Mm-hmm. Is it still there or has something revealed itself? Has something unfolded? We don't judge it. It's all our creations, and it's each of our individual creations in this moment, collectively. So, what if that had the power and the ability to transform your life right in this moment? A simple thing. It could be a virus cell, or it could just be a door opening. Uh, what, what a fun way to play, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so what do you notice right in this moment? 
uh, once again, in this moment, I feel a sense of peace. And and I think that the audience, when, when we join together in this consciousness, we will see that we all collectively now can change the world. One person, yes, but collectively much more mm-hmm. so. So, mm-hmm. so it's our amplified thoughts, our amplified prayer, our, our amplified, um, if you will, consciousness. Together mm-hmm. as a group, we can make a meaningful impact, not only in our lives, but throughout the world. Now, you, you see this with, with some social organizations, some religions, some corporations. When a group of people come together and they pool their assets, so to speak, mm-hmm. and they work together as a coordinated whole, it's phenomenal what they can achieve. It's just phenomenal. And that is consciousness in action. Yeah. Uh, what I'm registering, Tom, is how quiet the field is. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's like, no stress, no worry. No, there's no, there's not a lot of humanity flying here. There's just essence present. You're right. Yeah, it's very quiet. And that is to be a totally respected position. So everyone... Let that be your awareness. There we go. Where that can take you to be that connected, to be that clear. Because this is the place where you'll hear your truths. And remember, truths change all the time. But this is not a headset or a mindset. This is being present in heart centered awareness, the field of unified consciousness field of scale our energy quantum realms and these are real this is real what we're feeling Mm -hmm. and this has the power to change the world and as we all collectively sit here or whatever you may be Tom is bringing us into the awareness of the power that can be unfold there we go I think, you know, that's part of the challenge, Tom, is with social media and all these things, you think you're connected, and you are in some senses, but it's about being present. It's about feeling the connection, not just seeing it. You have to internalize it, have to have that relation, and that's the key of this, is that you realize, oh, there we are. My essence is cool, calm, and collect, quiet, and is fluid, and is moving like one of those mirages, you know, the heat waves uh-huh. that you see. Yes. And it's, uh, that is our essence, right? It doesn't have a form, but we want to give it a form. And, you know, humans like to have something to register and play with and think about and manipulate. And we've done that in our world, and we're transforming it. And this is our chance to stop and in our quantum leap here Mm -hmm. to just really reorganize and reset that. I agree. I agree. If 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 we look at the internet, what is the internet? Well, it it presents to us a three D reality, and it's a great Mm -hmm. it's a great way to interconnect mankind. But Mm -hmm. imagine if you're beyond space and time, and the internet of the universe is consciousness. Mm-hmm. which is far, far superior than our, our internet, our computer internet today. So w- what is my point? Well, we all marvel at the interconnectivity that the world has today by way of the internet. There's something much, much more profound, which is this consciousness internet, this technology that we speak of, and how this technology brings us total peace. It It is always in the present moment, Okay, there is there is never any uh, what I would consider superfluity. That everything is just right on. It's perfect. The essence is perfect. And with that statement, that's what we're trying to achieve today. The, to be in the moment. Okay, um, this is this is at, at will gesture, mm-hmm. and it's so important to be in the moment present in this state of consciousness and that's why it's so quiet because there's no story running 
There's no yeah. self. There's no self telling us or judging us. And there's no mind. It's just heart awareness. And for heart, for me, that's physical heart, certainly. It's the core essence of all. But that third meaning of heart is core essence. Oh, emotional train. That was it. So you've got the physical, you have the emotional train, and then you have the core essence of all. So you just, we're, we go transcend through those three. We move through those three uh, layers of conversation always and in, in that interior conversation that we're holding so mine is always that the thoughts follow the heart right as opposed to the thinking leading the 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 thing and in being as opposed to doing and that we are being present we are beings of just being they're, 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 you know, it's beyond description and beyond explanation, which I think is just fine. <laughs> but that it, does tend to throw people. <laughs> well, it reveals to us the majesty of the human form. And as you said, it's, it's, it's being. It's not necessarily revolved around uh, expressing yourself and doing. It's okay. simply you have that innate being. And by being in the present moment, a lot of people pray, a lot of people meditate, you can reach that state of happiness, that state of being, as as you put it, and being, a, 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 if you will, united with the Godhead. Mm -hmm. I think that is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, this way we move out of inspiration and not motivation. You know, we, yeah. it's good to be motivated, but that's an outside. So when it, the motivation takes us to an inspired action, then we're in absolute clarity of expressing being and being whatever we are being. So, okay. Well, what else do we notice right in this moment, Tom? I noticed that you and I have, have made an alliance, that you and I are connected, even though the, it, this is a transcontinental. You're, you're on the <laughs> West Coast, I'm on the East Coast. It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's, you know, we're, we're united in this consciousness. Um, I, I'm enjoying this conversation. We see how this is helping our psyche. This is helping your psyche. It's helping my psyche. How our thoughts, our emotions are building the reality around us. You know, this, this is one of the things that I see in the world. Too many people are unsettled. Um, there's too much confusion in the world. Um, maybe, maybe we should not be so self-absorbed in social media or television. Maybe we should be still, pray and meditate. Maybe that would be much better for us. Well, I think a lot of the uproar after the, you know, after the social distancing thing is because people are not comfortable with being present within themselves. Mm -hmm. And so they're clamoring to go back to work. And aside from, you know, uh, survival issues and water and food and, you know, the rent and all that. But it's also about, well, what do I do if I don't have my friends around me and what do I do if I don't go drinking every three days and you know it's those things it's sharing showing up as people's discomfort with being present and in those that are gonna I'm a firm believer in hundred monkey principle you know it just yes. takes a few <laughs> and things will happen yes. and and so I'm like counting off <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are we? <laughs> you know, and can I track that and go? Okay, because I feel that this will. This is bringing up so much globally. This virus and. Uh, stopping systems and we get to realign and jobs are realigning around people having worth they go to work because they know it's going to make a difference someplace right and i think a lot of what we've developed in society does not fulfill us in any way it's very shallow oriented we can call it entertainment but it's really not enlivening in any way and that this is our opportunity to reorganize it's definitely a conscious sleep in in well let me see consciousness sleep yeah right so how does that feel scale our watch how do you notice this you know you use you've developed a lot of machinery to help people in terms of wholeness and wellness definitely in health avenues how do you notice the field these days 
Well, you, you mentioned uh, the instrumentation. There is instrumentation available today, scalar instrumentation. And what I've always noticed about this, this presence, it has a direct interface on the mind and the heart. Um, and if you will, I think it has a direct interface on our seven chakras. Mm. So by, th yeah. by that I mean, once again, we're looking at this consciousness technology, scalar technology. This is what I've devoted my career to. It's not electricity. It's much more refined. It's much more important. And it's the way that we focus. It's the way that we achieve that bliss by being in the moment, by being content, by realizing that we are part of the universe. And it's so important to realize that. Part of the universe, made in the image of God, we're content, and, and we, we don't look for external stimuli to realize our worth. No, our worth was within ourselves. Got it. So, everyone notice, how do you value your worth within yourself? There we go. And that might be kind of interesting, because it is freaking peaceful in here, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, people are so used to uproar, yes, right? Are. And and the unclarity that comes in the uproar. And so, to have it so quiet means nothing's happening for some people. And that is not at all what we're talking about. This is energy that is alive. And it's yes. working on levels within each of us yes. that are totally, we can't keep track of. Right? Yes. Yes. And you don't want to. You don't want to be focused on how scalar is taking you places other than what you need to get out of the experience. So, in just this is just so fun. It's, it's so quiet. <laughs> All right. So let's see what else. What what else would you like to share, sweetie? You know, let, let's expand once again upon that comment. Um, so some people they look for activity. Well, why oh, not look? Right. Yeah. Why, why not look inward? Um, why not look at, at your life, at your state of consciousness, and why not be happy with that state of consciousness? Let's, let's face it. Some of the greatest inspirations that we've ever arrived at, we've arrived at when we're still, when we're in prayer, when we're united with God. And that is so important. Uh, many times in my academic career, it's by being still that I receive my inspiration, and therefrom, I can, I can experiment 5, 10, 20 years from one inspiration. So by being still and by being present, that, that's not uh, considered to be a, an, um, a, a foolish uh, expenditure mm -hmm. of time. To the contrary, mm -hmm. by, by looking inward and by this introspection, that can open up new pathways that we've never dreamed of. So many times as, as an inventor, as a discoverer, by being still, by praying, that is the, the afflatus, that is the aha moment that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because most people I'm sure who listen to this podcast here are or do meditation and they do different things. I think what I always appreciated about the consciousness technologies was the absolute quickness and that you didn't need dogmas and rights because that became about process and that became about setup and it became about setting up a state. So being okay simple breathe you know heart there you go you're in it and and how you can live life that way so the quiet that is within any of us accessible at any moment and that stillness that you're talking about is is easy right it doesn't have to be a difficult something you have to study for years and we appreciate you <laughs> studying for years but that that in the moment if there is no time and time is malleable or, tra you know, uh, responsive to the way we set it up always, that we just have to turn, oh, there it is. And yes. there it is. 
And change can happen that quickly. In my work, we're looking at where in being in this state, change can happen in our patterns. That we can look, and this is what we're doing here, everyone. As you're, as you're in the stillness, you're unfolding. Yes. Story. And so in the unfolding, you hear yourself talk. And you start to notice what your interior space, your expectations are. And what we're talking about is where intention, where you'd like something different, meets that expectation and can become something different. And it can happen in a moment. And because in scale R and quantum, there is no time or space. It's malleable. So we're playing by different rule sets. And so what we think reality is, is really just these different layers of reality that we're encompassing all at the same time. And it's it's so important to to spend some time every day in prayer and meditation or or mm-hmm. introspection, you know. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it, it's it, life is a blur, and and you're simply <laughs> running from one appointment to another. You don't want to do that. I'm sure you. I'm sure our audience yeah. does not do that. I'm, what I'm <laughs> what I'm simply trying to do yeah. is is reaffirm yeah. reaffirm yes. and inculcate it in in everybody that. You know, we're, there is a, a beauty to the human form. There's a mastery to the human form. And we're, we're not flesh and bones. We are spirit. Everybody has the spirit of God in them. And it's, I think it's just so crucial that we connect with, with the Godhead and that we spend time every day in prayer, in meditation, some type of introspection. Why? Because it's the rudder of the ship. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, the course of the ship is decided upon the rudder. And the way we think and, and the way we project is ultimately the reality that we inherit. Um, and it doesn't take much. You know, I love the ship metaphor because you change one degree yes. on course. You yeah. you go someplace totally different than you were expecting to go. You may be waving to where you thought you wanted to go and here you're going here. It does not take much so we don't have to think in terms so much of absolutes or you have to do this for 20 minutes a day or whatever the structure might be it's just bringing that awareness in that you're willing to sit with yourself because you hold the wisdom of the ages within us and that everything is accessible and that space between your hands is as full and as real as what you think your hands are so that the world is a user-friendly interface yes i like that expression (laughs) (laughs) Uh, i want to give people encouragement this is so easy to do i'm sure many of you in the listening audience uh, do this on a daily basis and continue to do so and it's it's with your prayers and your meditation that you are changing the world this has been proven that Mm -hmm. that meditation that prayer that good deeds good thoughts change the world and we need more of that um and again, this is the consciousness technology that we're finally arriving at. You know, let's let's face it: the the steel industry was wonderful, but it was hard and was arduous. And <laughs> now we've 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 made a quantum leap with transistors and computers, and that's wonderful. But nonetheless, there's even something better than that, and that's this this life force energy technology, in which we can actually find our way into the essence of the universe. The consciousness technology is the last frontier of all technology. And it's my belief that this new technology, consciousness technology, will supersede the computer industry, will supersede the transistor, will supersede telecommunications. This is the final frontier It because it's the perfect frontier. And that's where we're going. That's We're at the very vanguard of the perfect frontier, the final frontier, consciousness technology. So that Star Trek transportation thing. Yes. How possible is that, right? Yes. It doesn't, it, in, in being able to take ourselves apart 
and and go to different realities. That's what they were always doing on the ship. They were going into different realities, right? And they may not have called it that, but that was in their reality context. And it, we do that all the time. We may not do it in our physical form at this point, but we are certainly doing it through thought, and we're doing it through feeling and in all these stages. And I think the probably the last hurrah, you know, would be the physical form. But, you know, how different would your life be if you had that reality? I know lots of people who have done incredible magic, what we call magic, in their life. And, you know, got a, got a tumor one minute and, well... What the hell happened? Why? Where's your tumor? You know, in the next, and so stuff can come and go, and it's happening all the time, all around us, and we just don't hold it in awareness because it rattles our story presumptions too much, right? We've all got our bias that we've got running. So, you must. Are you the only one doing all this, or is there a real big community that's doing this? How does this work these days? Well, I, I would say, uh, apart from the scientific um, apparatus, I would say everybody in the world is doing this. But as far as <laughs> yeah. as far as the instrumentation, I, I think I'm one of the few, and that's a shame. And and I don't say that with any sense of glee or, or satisfaction. I wish other people would, would delve into this. But I guess the main impediment, frankly, Janet, is that this is so time-consuming. You have to devote your life to this. You know, there were great inventors, and they devoted their lives lives to their inventions. Well, I have devoted my life to this technology, and and, uh, it's a life well lived, and I have no regrets, but I will be the first to tell you that this is all-encompassing. This is not a hobby. This is not a Mm part-time job, so to speak, and that's, I think that's one of the the, the impediments right now. People cannot uh, focus as as they need to do. Yes, we become very short-sighted in our quick, 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 quick. <laughs> it's almost the ACD, you know, you can't hold a focus yeah. any, anywhere at all. All right, so you've got instruments. You, you'd you use this, fo- mo- would you say healing is where you've really seen results with this? Or where 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 do you focus with your experience of Scalar? Yeah, first and foremost, healing. And why do I say that? Well, I, I had to start somewhere with this technology, and I wanted to impress upon people that it worked. So mm-hmm. my my first uh, benchmark was healing, and I'm it, it works, and it, it it works very well. And, and, mm-hmm. and in the future, I want to expand into energy generation and perhaps anti gravity. But right mm-hmm. now, today, we're we're working with healing, and and. I have to set my sights and be present in the moment and healing. And we do have a healing ministry, and it is quite quite favorable. Mm -hmm. So everybody noticed, right, in this moment, if you had something that you'd like to have that's challenging you, right? Kind of got you bemused, focused, spent your time on. What it would be like, create, because I think this is one thing you do. You have people send pictures in to you. That's and correct. You, and you train them. So, everyone in your mind, I want you to take a photograph of what you what your concern is. And I'm going to throw this at you, Tom. He's not expecting this. Everybody, just take your photograph, your incredible Polaroid, and just put it in the transformer and send it to Tom. Now you can access Tom. He's there. And do you have one particular kind of machine you use on your photographs, Tom? Uh, I, I have various instruments. It's really okay. well, a number of right. variants. But nonetheless, yeah. let's just focus on one instrument, sure. Okay. So we're just going to allow the machine to interact with what you think your concern is. And I'm very deliberate in how I'm putting this out. You can hear it. Because the more you focus on something, the more it becomes. And one thing in this work you realize is that it's just bits and pieces of a lot of photons and mass. So, if you call something something, that's what it becomes. So, in just what it'd be like to have Tom's machine look at your photograph. 
And when you, does this something that takes more than a moment, Tom, or is this something that happens over days, or how does that work? Uh, it it does work in the moment in an instant, and uh, many people en- enjoy it over the course of months and even years. So to answer your question, both both, both. are applicable. Okay, so everyone, since we just we're getting close on time here, just notice what it'd be like to get. Do you send the photograph back? Or how does that work, Tom? We, we destroy the photographs. People will send us a photograph, and we'll we'll work with them for 30 days. And after that, we destroy the photograph. Got it. All right. So, everyone, since there is no time or space, we're going to collapse time and space. And we're going to allow your photograph to dematerialize. And then what you'll get to do is notice in the moment and in your coming moments if something's different. There we go. That's always the fun about this, Tom, is that we say something's real, it becomes real, right? Yes. <laughs> there yes, you go. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> so, in, in noticing in the moment what seems appropriate. So, what else would you like people to know? I think we're probably getting closer time here. So, right. what what would you like to share? I want to thank the audience for your time, and I want to thank the audience for making this a better world, and I mean every word of that. By your prayers, your actions, your thoughts, you're making this world a better place to live. Now, imagine if 7.8 billion people did that on a daily basis. This would be heaven on earth. That's one of my goals in life, to make people aware of this state of bliss and be happy with themselves and be content. Too much negativity in the world. So thank you all for making this a better place, a better world to live in. And share your love. Share your ideas. 7.8 billion people on the planet performing these mental and spiritual exercises. This would be heaven on earth. Yeah. And if we use the 100th monkey principle, where we just need to see see those 100 light up. And then everybody, and that converts and transcends and sways, changes the energy. Then it's into everybody. Because I think sometimes some um, things feel so big, it's what does that have to do with me kind of thinking. And what this is all, what you're being very clear about is that we're in a state, and I'll use the term oneness. We're sharing in this energy. We're sharing in consciousness. We make it up. And we're collectively, whether it's fear or love or whatever the emotion is, we're all, we all become part of it. And so it's to the individual to be responsible for what am I putting out in the world. And you may think you're not putting anything out in the world, and that's your blindness. We, we fail to see our connectiveness, and we can get feel it physically and look at how everybody has responded to the idea of physically being, you know, uh, kept from others. We all feel like solitary confinement or something, and that's a very interesting awareness to have because then you don't have the interface going on you have the clarity of well how do i connect with my neighbor how am i feeling my brother how 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 do i register with you where you are and i'm here and we're so physically far apart but we're right present and this is what we're looking to get out into the world is that um, at any place, at any time, we are one. We're all connected. We're all in scalar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, anything else you'd like to offer, or do you think we this feels like a good place? Uh, I, I want to thank you once again, Janet, for your time and the listening audience. Thank you for your effort and time. Make this a better world. Make this a better place as you are. And thank you all for, for your efforts. God bless. Thank you. And Tom's going to have an offer he's going to have on our website for the show, the podcast webpage, that for a free what, – what, tell me what that is again. We work with people for 30 days for free, um, no questions asked. People send us a photograph, and we perform a chakra balancing with these instruments. And we also eradicate germs from their body. Um, wow. The web- yeah, the website is scalarlight.com. Just visit the website. At the very top, you'll see a free trial 
send in your photographs. So your entire family, you can send in 20 photographs if you want. <laughs> You are so sweet. Well, Tom, this has been delightful. Do you think you might come back another time and we can talk about another I, part of all this? I, I, I'd love to. We've barely scratched the surface. <laughs> barely scratched the surface. Okay, dear. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Thank you. Tom brings to our awareness men of science and engineering who created new perspectives in our witnessing of life around us. His life has been influenced by, in particular by two remarkable men. T. Gallen Aronimus, one of the few scalar energy researchers in the United States in the last century. His work was to identify and utilize the subtle energies that surround us outside of the electromagnetic spectrum. Tom was able to read Galen's original research notes and use of his instruments. I am including two links for him. One is for Galen and conversation about energy, and the other about his work with quantum agriculture and cosmic culture. The other influence was the remarkable Nikola Tesla. You can find many links for him on the internet. I am including one. He was both a man of his time and out of time. His was not an easy life, but his scientific contributions to us in understanding the energetic dynamics that make up this world and the cosmos continue to resonate in the quantum and physical worlds alongside Einstein and others. Here are two quotes from Nikola Tesla. Every living being is an engine geared to the wheel work of the universe. Though seemingly affected only by its immediate surrounding, the sphere of external influence extends to infinite distance. And this one. Peace can only come as a natural consequence of universal enlightenment. And from astronaut Edgar D. Mitchell sixth man to walk on the moon and co-founder of the Institute of Noetic Sciences, which is a non-profit group dedicated to studying how beliefs, thoughts, and intentions affect the physical world. There are no unnatural or supernatural phenomena, only very large gaps in our knowledge of what is natural. We should strive to fill those gaps of ignorance. This is episode 37 blog, At Our Core of Being. I am not in any way, shape, or form with any level of training as a scientist with specific training and learning traditions, but I can speak to their fields of knowledge from my own experience and wisdom. Consciousness is made up of many things. Actually, everything in the cosmos is part of the collective we call consciousness, be it energy or form of some sort that we can observe, and that which we cannot observe, as it has no observable physical form, but is just as real. And then there is potential, the unknown. Space, too, is not empty, but filled with dynamic energies we can label. Depending on your trainings, you can take apart all the known and unknown factors that we use as anchors in consciousness. Things like electricity and gravity and magnetism can be observed taking place. And then there is what is taking place that is not seen, but may be observed only over years, like the nature of black holes. There is also scalar energy, which is found in our quantum level of awareness. Go inward and sit in the seat of the spirit realm as such. It is the quantum realm. It can all get confusing at times when we are thinking about it. Religion and what we think spirituality is, what metaphysics are, and what science is finally identifying comes with language that can be just create more confusion when we have broad backgrounds of inquiry and exploration about being. Pile on lots of studies and confusion can reign in the alignment. Different traditions use different language for referencing the same thing. 
And then one may tend to use a mix of terminology like I do often. So we pull back the labels and we just let our senses experience. We pull back and let mind relax and we enter into the world of scalar dynamics and energy. We enter our core essence as consciousness. Scalar energy is quantum energy. It is a life force called prana, chi, mana, zero point field. We can feel it. We can manipulate it. We can create with it. We can heal with it. We don't make it. It is the given. My metaphysical senses and abilities at an early age took me places with being intuitive and psychic and hot hands that could make others feel better, clear conditions. My hands don't get that hot these days, but if I wave my hand, people can fall over. That's always fun. By my adult years, my life's health journey was compromising the length and quality of life. I would come to find myself exploring into the quantum realm of embracing life through metaphysics, which is where I started. I had to go beyond any training or tradition, going beyond my own or anyone else's construction of God, source, universe, and the spirit realm, taking all the metaphysical skills I had and reframing conclusions and seemingly certainties into a state of just information, not judgments, that I was not even aware I was holding. I reconnected with the power of not just mind and self, but of not seeing a spiritual life in terms of good and evil, the world full of rights and wrongs, and thinking that mind was all there was and believing in my limitations is real. Any emotion, be it love, fear, abandonment, etc., any trauma of abuse or compromise, has value in the scheme of things. My judgments were the issues, my human values. I started to explore the reality of consciousness that are quantum realm levels of awareness and body. I had to find a way out of my box that was turning into a casket. I didn't have to become a physicist or a quantum scientist. I just began to approach the and appreciate the growing field of consciousness technologies and sharpening up my sense of bias of judgments and conclusions that are in everything we observe and label in any tradition of learning. I just learned to let go of what I thought something had to be and to just being open to noticing what was present to my senses and not judging the information to be in a state of essence, I'll call it. I can feel where bias is present in the word used. I could pull the qualities of awareness into my own observations about energy. To be free of any religious, spiritual labels and encompassing beliefs that not allowing me to access potential. To shift how I was experiencing life from within my own bias of rules about that life and those traditions of learning which were they were encompassing. How I was fulfilling my destiny and playing into my own creation. I needed to create different rules of bias if I was to live. And so it began, this part of my journey of enlightenment into being. I have been all along, but not with any awareness that I was forming my reality that I would start unfolding into my truth of essence as consciousness, free of any dictates we label. Someone can tell you something and you agree or disagree. It is true because it has no connection to you within. You don't feel any connection. And the connection can be there, but confusion, avoidance, resistance is wrapped around it. Connection is a feeling. It is also a sense and a state of awareness. Scalar energy is in the core, the heart of everything that is in the cosmos and in us. It is sunlight and starlight, and it is the essence of life. And now for something not quite so completely different, here is a gentle reminder. Time to wake up from the extensive meditation archive at Interlude, an internet retreat. Time to wake up. The times call for a wiser humanity. In the past, we responded to our injuries as the Philistines or the Hittites might. Force was a legitimate way of settling problems. 
we would demonize people we didn't understand and sometimes lay waste to their towns and villages. Uh, we have a choice. We can continue a heritage of consciousness that is fully compatible with Neolithic and Iron Age thinking. We can round up innocent people we think might be a threat. We can use our hate to fool us into thinking we are not afraid. Or we can grow up as a species and try something different. In 2020, we can communicate with people across the globe. We can see pictures and learn about people who seem different than us. We can read books about unfamiliar religions. We have access to spiritual leaders of many traditions who can help us to higher levels of consciousness and compassion. Anyone who cares to seek wisdom can explore any number of religions and philosophies. We can explore ourselves in psychotherapy and meditation. If we want to get to know people from different cultures, they're not hard to find. We have no need to close our hearts and minds to any part of humanity. In not-too-distant history, death camps, killing fields, and mass graves of ethnic cleansing showed the fruits of hatred, blind obedience, and fanaticism. We can and must elevate our minds and open our loving hearts. It can be a dog-eat-dog -dog world if we aspire to nothing more than dog consciousness. We can operate on the basis of an eye for an eye if we haven't progressed as a species since Hammurabi codified that law 4,000 years ago. Or we can take a step up on the ladder of moral development. Let's challenge ourselves to wake up, to be more conscious. We must be aware of our base emotions, our fears, aversions, and hatreds. To have a different and better world than our ancestors, we must recognize the prejudices we have inherited and root them out. To be strong, and that we must be, we need to be centered, grounded, and balanced in our hearts and minds. If the world is in for a great struggle, let that struggle not be just out there against someone else. Let us use the energy that is moving in us and in our society to make something different. Let us do our inner work with renewed earnestness and carry the good we draw from our efforts out to the world that needs it so badly. Let us pray. Let us meditate. Let us examine ourselves and challenge our small thinking and dark emotions. Let us act out of love. You can reach Tom at his website, www.scalarlight.com. He mentioned that at the top of his website homepage, you will find a free trial offer available for anyone where you can send in your photo and his machines will focus for you. There is also a phone number for your questions to the support desk at 805-364-3051. I want to be sure to mention that Boyd, our very talented and patient sound engineer, is also the owner of Pure Energy RX. If you are feeling stressed, you might consider using some of the energetic formula supplements and products he sells, everything from energy medicines to essential oils. You will find them reasonably priced, and he offers lots of personal service and information. You can reach Boyd at pureenergyrx at gmail.com and at pureenergyrx on Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to at least sign up to receive his wonderful newsletter. It is always full of interesting information about the latest on the cutting edges of science, medicine, and consciousness. Thank you for joining me here at Journeys to Enlightenment with Janet. A new episode is released every two weeks. Any questions or thoughts or guests you'd like to suggest, you can email me directly at Janet and Beyond Podcast at Outlook.com. For more information about all the elements that make up each episode, they are on my podcast page at my website, www.JanetAndBeyond.com. 
While there, you will also find information about my other podcast show, Conscious Conversations with Joan and Janet, and all about my work with clients. You can sign up to receive my regular weekly blog, Life in the Beyond, Journeys into Enlightenment. If you are looking for other regular opportunities to sit in heart-centered awareness with myself and others, you can join us in my Fuzzy Photons Playground groups I offer on Wednesdays. Live, interactive space via Zoom video conferencing. You can follow each episode of this podcast series on my YouTube channel, Journeys into Enlightenment with Janet Barrett. Till the next time, notice what feels different right in this moment. It is real, and it can last a lifetime.